and welcome to Build Series Sydney. My name is Kate Peck and today we are chatting with the very talented singer-songwriter Jacob Lee before he takes off on his North American trip. But before we get down to business, we thought we'd take a look at his new track. <laughs> Jacob. Hello, how are you? I am, I'm great. Hopefully you're great too, but I have so many questions about that. Gorgeous, beautiful, ethereal, spiritual track. But I think I could hear a yak bell in the start. Do you have a pet yak? I wish. Yes. I do not have a pet yak. People usually think they're wind chimes. So that's very uh, observant of you. Oh, well I thank you. You know, I know my yak bells. It's something I, <laughs> I, I, I pride myself in. Uh, but the song. So talk to me about it because it's it's gorgeous. Are you wearing your pyjamas in there though? Is that it's actually a bathrobe, yeah. Oh, okay. Very nice. I went to H&M and I wanted to find <laughs> something flowy. And all they had was a bathrobe. So I just wore that in the field. It works. It worked. It worked fantastically. So talk to me about the song. What? Because when you read it as well, it, it reads as con science, but you say it as conscience. Yeah. I mean, that's, I guess that's, that is how the word's pronounced, conscience. Um, and it's another word for conscious in a way. And this song has been something that I've been trying to write for a very long time. I'm not very good at writing about myself and my own kind of thoughts. I'm better at writing about other people and stories that I kind of conjure up about everyone else's life. So this is the first time I've been able to release a song that's actually all about my thoughts and the way that I think and, and ponder in a way. And the the film clip. So I know that you take a lot of um, a lot of pride in creativity and and your impact in in everything that you do. How much did you have to do with the with the video clip and the creativity behind it? Yeah, entirely. Um, I find as much joy in that as I do writing the songs. So I work with a group called Moonboy Entertainment, and they're on the Gold Coast where I live. And I send through from like zero to four seconds, four to six seconds, six to eight seconds, like the entire song of what I think should happen. And then he tells me why it is or it's not possible. <laughs> a lot of the time it's not possible. <laughs> um, so you're a control freak. Um, I guess I micromanage a lot of my stuff, yeah. <laughs> I guess when, you, when it's your baby, right? That's what you, you want to do. You want to see it become everything that it could be in your mind. Definitely. I try and portray a certain story and, and the vision that I, I want to keep it as authentic as I possibly can. The lyrics, the melodies, everything I want to be as they were created from the get-go. And it is hard through production sometimes to keep all of that with budgets and everything but I do my best in trying to keep it as genuine as possible. And your, well, your fan base, but also your lyrics and everything that you stand for, it's very, it's very spiritual. Um, tell me about that impact that you've had on your fan base and, and what the message is that you're kind of trying to get across with your words. I think it's this album and the last two releases are edging a little bit more spiritual. The stuff in the past is as I said, more about other people and stories that I've kind of made up along the way. Like Cursed is a song about schizophrenia, breadcrumbs from the perspective of a young boy or girl that's been kidnapped. All these different things that I never thought I would write about, but they kind of came out one day and I decided that it might be worthwhile releasing for somebody. But this new album is a little bit more spiritual because I think I am becoming better at talking about the way that I think now. And it's been something that I've wanted to do for a very long time, but haven't had the ability to. I just haven't been able to get my words onto paper in that way. And now it's like this insane release for me, being able to talk about these wacky thoughts that I have. And um, it seems that people do relate to them. So where does this inspiration come from? Do you get it from the world around you? Or it just have you just got this weird magical wizard mind going in your brain that's just bubbling away? Um, I don't think I've got a, maybe I would, I want a wizard mind. <laughs> I don't think I have a wizard mind. Um, I am uncertain. I think it comes from trying to clear my mind in a way and not going in with any preconceived ideas as to what I want to write. Um, every time I sit to write a song, it's alone and I've got to make sure that nobody else is around, like not even in the other room that can hear me, just so I can say the most crazy out there things and bring them back and hone them in and actually create a song from that. So I think it's just 
me spending time alone trying to clear all my all my thoughts and then creating these concepts that are authentic to me. Why spirituality? Like was that you're not from a little wizard family, I'm sure, but perhaps there was Buddhism in your in your past. What what drew you to to exploring spirituality? That's the thing. I find that I'm interested in it and I do read about it and I read about a lot of different religions and philosophical kind of texts and whatever but apart from that it's literally just how I've always thought and I always try and get to the deeper side of things and that's just kind of I think I've always been that way Um, so it's not exactly intentional it just kind of comes out and I find that it's my personal way of writing and I don't really want to change that because I think it is a little bit different to what's being released in pop culture at the moment. And take me back to to a mini you. What type of what type of kid were you? What were you like? What, what were you like running around in the schoolyard? Were you a bad student? Were you getting? Were you skimming school? Were you smoking pot? What was your thing? <laughs> um, I did go through kind of a bad stage. I think I experienced a little bit of a lot very early, and then realized quite early that it was the wrong thing to do. So I've kind of from very early on in my life. Um, been trying to improve and progress. I've always wanted to do this, and I'm really lucky in that I've known that I've wanted to do this my entire life. Um, I love words and writing, so any medium where I can write something, if it's writing literature or songs or poetry, anything, I just want to put pen to paper as often as possible. One of your first um, public kind of experiences with being in a band was I think about 2012 with Oracle East, which was a boy band. When now I think of boy bands, I think of the Backstreet Boys and blah, blah, blah. But I just cannot see the Backstreet Boys coming out of you there. What was that band kind of like? What did it teach you? So that was a little bit of a quick experience, I guess. There was a local radio station uh, competition and they were putting together a boy band. And this is when One Direction was massive. So um, my mum and I were kind of like, oh, yep, why not? So I went for the audition and um, ended up in this boy band for about three weeks. It was literally not even a month. And we, um, we wrote about three songs that were insanely cheesy and we kind of broke up after three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> was that a painful breakup? No. I mean, I think we all understood that it wasn't exactly for us. Um, I think a few of them went on to do other boy bands or other bands. That kind of solidified the fact that I wanted to stay solo. <laughs> Did you, do you remember the first time when you were up on stage and you were like, this is what I want to do. This is, this is for me up here. This is my special place. Yeah, luckily the school I was at early on, Um, it gave me a lot of opportunities to perform, like in assemblies and even like chapels and things like that. So I would just, I was in a school band called Revelation and it was this like, it was a Christian school so we sung all these hymns for the school and um, literally any any opportunity to jump up on stage I would end up there and um, people kind of knew me as the dude that sung, I guess, always. Yeah, so you, you started a little fan base from there and your mum was probably your number one fan, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think she still is, yeah. Because <laughs> you've got a partner as well, Nikki. Does she, uh, the touring situation, because I saw you just bought a house and you've got a little dog now, so you're kind of all settled, but it's funny because music is going to really take off and things are going to go pretty bananas. So is that is that an interesting balance that you're having to try to find? Well, luckily, Nikki is incredible. Like, she understands this career and understands when I have to be away. And I've been away quite a bit the past two years, um, just trying to get my music on an international level, performing anywhere I can. And it was initially quite difficult um, because we hadn't experienced it together. But now we're, we're pretty adept. Like, we, um, she knows that if I'm away for three months or longer that we'll still talk every day and FaceTime and everything like that. And we both live together now, so there's a place for us, especially when I come home. And it's, um, it's actually, I'm very lucky. It's, it's very good. 
And touring, because you've just come off a big headline tour in the UK and the Euro- and Europe, um, what experience is that like? For us normal punters, we see rock and roll stars and we think, wow, that's just – it just – it looks amazing and fun but a lot of hard work and long hours. And what, what was the experience like for you? Were there parties? Was it quiet? Were you meditating, you know? Were you throwing televisions out of windows? Um, it was actually, I'm sorry to disappoint, but it was pretty quiet. We actually, we caught public transport everywhere. Um, it was just Nikki and I, we both went and she, um, I had to write on like the, the UK visa merch, merch seller. That's what she was. <laughs> um, she wasn't my partner for that one. So um, she came along and helped me with everything that I couldn't do when I was on stage. And honestly, The most surreal feeling for me, and it's because I think it's been a vision of mine forever, is to sing to a room of people and them all knowing my words and and singing back these stories. And there was actually a moment um, in the Netherlands in Utrecht and Nikki went uh, outside and videoed the line. And I'd never been there before, but there were 400 people waiting and I was like, what the hell? Um, So I was performing and telling stories and and, and everything. And then a girl in the audience kind of stopped me midway through, like in between songs. And she said, I want to speak on behalf of everybody here. Like she's talking from the audience with all these people that your music helps us and it makes a difference. And everyone agreed and clapped. And I told Nikki that I wouldn't cry. And I didn't. I almost cried though. But I was, that's exactly all I've ever wanted is people, um, just hearing and, and knowing my, my words and stories. So, Because you have a really huge fan base of, of young girls and young guys as well, um, very much in the online scene. What, what are they like? What, do you, what are your fans generally like? What, do they send you fan mail? Do you have fan moments besides that one, which was beautiful? Um, I get a, a lot of drawings and I get a lot of people saying that I look like Jesus. Yeah. Which I, I don't feel, I mean, I understand in the bathrobe, like they, they see that with the flowy pants and stuff. And that's definitely not intentional. I just like to wear that kind of thing. And I don't think Jesus wore bathrobes. He didn't go to H&M, that's for sure. Well, yeah, no, he, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he could have seen that ahead. You know. <laughs> yeah. He could have developed H&M. What do maybe. We know? <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, I, they're just really accepting and loving which is really nice. I find that little communities get made throughout the social media platforms. The people that comment more frequently, they kind of know each other. And um, it's nice that there seems to be like a really accepting, loving attitude toward the people that seem to come on board with, with my music. And I'm not sure exactly why. Like, I do write from empathy a lot of the time and I I know that does resonate with people because I'm trying to get into their shoes and trying to come from their perspective. But I can't really pinpoint why it is that everyone that seems to come on to this community is very just happy and loving. And so it's been a very long time since X Factor and The Voice, but now you're getting like over 4 million streams a week online. Like it's unbelievable. What do you think about you has just taken off online? Because you keep things fairly, you know, you're under the radar. It's been quite a slow burn. Uh, I've been releasing music for a while now and releasing quite frequently. I've, I love the marketing s- side of it. So I try and figure out ways that are going to get people to keep coming back each time. And I find the major thing there is just consistency. Always putting out music, always putting out videos. I put out three videos per song usually, a music video, a lyric video, and, and, and a live session. Um, and I'm trying to keep up with that for this album now as well. But, um, yeah, I feel like consistency seems to be the one that keeps drawing people in. And, yeah, it seems to be working so far. And what else were you doing when this wasn't all you could be doing? I mean, God, it must feel good to just do music, but we've all got to make a crust of bread. Yeah, I mean, I busked for a long time in Surface Paradise so I was on the street for four years, not living on the street, but busking on, on the street there. And then um, also performing in cafes and pubs and clubs, wherever. I would also just work retail or night shifts at nightclubs, like doing like the glassy kind of thing. Um, lifeguarding and, I'd, and I'm a personal trainer. Not that it looks like it now. <laughs> but um, I would train people uh, at like Snap Fitness down on the Gold Coast. So. Man, you're busy. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I really wanted to record my first single, Chariot. And it was a song I wrote for Nikki, actually. And I definitely didn't have enough to record it at the quality in which I wanted to. And for me, I understand that production is very important to a song. Like, you can have an incredible song, but if it's not delivered the right way, people still aren't going to hear it or appreciate it. So I waited and saved up for that and then recorded Chariot in the way that I thought was the best. Um, and then slowly kept releasing music to then turn the table where now I can do this full time. Yeah, very satisfying. Yeah. You're a completely independent artist. I mean, you only got management just recently. You've got Philosophy, which is your record label. Um, how hard is that? Being a musician these days, it's, it's a hard gig. There's, there's so much competition. There's not a lot of cash. I mean, is that all consuming? I find that I, I try and stay away from most of it. Um, as you said, it's kind of flown under the radar for a long time now. And I just love to write music and, and put it out and perform it. So you won't really see me at a lot of the events that kind of occur. Um, and there's no real reason for it. I think I just prefer to be writing music and, and doing my thing. That's where I find the most joy. So I think that's why it's been under the radar for quite a long time now. Um, but I, I like it that way, I think. It's not the traditional method, so you're kind of you're kind of doing your own thing, which is is that is that making it harder for you or is that working for you? I mean, I think it's probably made the experience and the journey slower. Um, instead of networking and kind of sh showing and trying to prove who I am all the time, I'm just I'm not. <laughs> I'm just kind of, as I said, writing music. So it's definitely made it slower, um, but. I've always said whether I get absolutely massive or stay at this level, I just love what I what I do. So if it does take a bit longer, that's okay with me. And in terms of how much help you get um, with your songwriting, is it just it's completely you? You do it all solos? Yeah, so I write everything alone and then I'll produce the demo that I'm capable of doing, but I'm not that great at production really. Um, it's something I want to get better at, but at this current time, I'm, I'm better at songwriting. So I have a producer that I go and visit once the songs are written, and we work together on getting it to a level that we think is of a high quality. And then the the processes after that. So having your own your own record label, what does that what does that mean for people who don't really know what that entails and what you can do with that and why you would choose to to take that path? I think it's just a uh, early platform for me to release my music and have full ownership of that. Um, and eventually down the line, because I do love the back end of everything, I would love to get to a level where I think I can give value to other artists that are coming up and then you can sign them and, and bring them up and teach them the ways that you kind of did things. So I think at the moment, I'm, I'm literally just releasing music under this this label and it's nothing much more than that but down the line I'm trying to create this thing where it's been on a journey with me and it's not just Jacob Lee but it's me with an actual business behind me as well so then when I get to a point that's established enough I can go and have enough resources to help other people too. And you've got 10 tracks to release this year, you've said. That's a lot of tracks! <laughs> You're going to be very busy! <laughs> it's going to be, I mean ideally I wanted to release 20. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm writing more at the moment for album three and I want to release two albums this year. Um, I think it still can happen, um, but we just have to wait and see. At the moment when I'm not performing, I'm just writing more music and trying to develop the, the content and the concepts that I'm coming up with because I find that sometimes I get so obsessed with something that I could end up writing a lot of the same thing. Um, so I need to try and expand my views a bit, even if it's just traveling and experiencing new things where I learn a completely new perspective from somebody and then I can take that and put that into music. Um, hopefully it's 20 yeah. <laughs> yeah, this year. Yeah. <laughs> Aim low, go high. Yeah. I mean, because you kind of need to get out of your bubble sometimes. You need a second opinion. You need somebody there to, to kind of guide you and, and help you a little bit. Do you Have you had those people in your past that have been able to give you that? I would say uh, Matt Bartlam, my producer, has been a massive impact and um, he's had a massive impact and made a, a really big difference on me in just understanding 
not just the industry, but the way that you should be as a person and having integrity in the way that you move and the way that you write. He's so much about writing music that matters. And because I've come from a background where I believe the same thing, we've kind of reiterated that in one another, I think, which is great. Instead of looking at trends and trying to follow those trends, we just neglect them in a way and write what, what, we, what we feel, you know what I mean? Um, and produce however we want. And then I think personally, and, and I might be wrong, but I think that's the way you become more of a legacy artist and you create something that's long term because you sound a little bit different. Yeah, and that's it because, I mean, you do – everybody listens to music. It's You can't not listen to music, right, if, especially if you're a musician. So do you do you find that you do take things from other people or do you completely – you just want to block them out and you do your thing? I mean, I love obviously listening to new artists and I try and keep up to date with who's coming in and what people are releasing. And I, I adore the pop world. I think it's so – all the music that's coming out right now is actually really clever when you, when you dive deep into it. Um, but – my own kind of the stories and the concepts that I write about, it's never from, it's, as I said, it's kind of like a preconceived, it's not a preconceived thing. Um, I try my best to approach writing with nothing in mind, the most blank page or canvas you could possibly have, and then you develop on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, we've got a bit of a Q&A to kick off. Because oh. we've got some very eager fans here who have been sending in some questions from our audience. Right. Um, so we've got some names here, which is great. If you're sending in any questions, make sure that you write your name on there. First is from the Anonymous, who did not follow those rules. What's your dream festival slash concert you would want to play at in the future? I think definitely Coachella. It just seems like the best time yeah. of all time. So, Have you been? I've never been. Oh, mate. Have no, you? Neither have I, so oh. I can't tell you. But I've seen it on Instagram and it looks pretty sweet. Yeah, it looks next level. <laughs> okay, next up, Bianca. You sing about mental illness, specifically schizophrenia, in one of your songs on your latest record. What was your motivation behind that? So as I kind of briefly mentioned in the interview, it does come from nowhere. So that one honestly kind of came out of a subconscious um, place for me. And I finished writing it or almost finished writing it and I was like kind of surprised in the way that it's kind of come out in this empathetic story about somebody else. And then I think though that the things that we see in life, whether it's on television or in person, um, they do take a toll on you in a way that you might not realise. And I, I believe that's where a lot of the stories come from, even though we may not realise that initially. So that song, I think, came from experiences that I may have seen. I've never experienced anything like that, or I don't know anyone that has had schizophrenia. Um, but I guess I've seen various things that have maybe impacted me on a subconscious level, and then it came out through a song. Thanks, Bianca. That was really good. Okay, next up, Emma. You went from quite a heavy pop sound while on The Voice to a much more indie approach. What was it like reinventing yourself after reality TV? Um, well, I mean, they honestly, they actually give you a lot of the songs that you're going to sing. You don't really get to choose. So um, they were quite interested in having me look more like a boy band character as well. So that's why I sung Story of My Life, One Direction on the show. And it's still a great song and I, and I loved performing it and it was a good experience. But the stuff I was writing before the show and after the show was actually quite similar. I just didn't get a chance to show that on, on TV. Got one from Nav. Does touring need discipline both physically and mentally? Definitely. Um, I find that I get sick quite easily. Um, I dealt with asthma when I was younger and sinus-wise I just get very congested very quickly. So if I'm not taking care of myself and resting, uh, I find that I just go downhill really quick. On this UK tour actually, the first time in my life I got sick throughout a day. Usually you get sick overnight and you wake up with a cold, but I felt it coming <laughs> through the day and I was like, oh no. By the end of the night for my show, I was just completely congested um, and for the next three shows of that tour, I was congested. But you, you get through that kind of thing, that's fine. And how do you carry everything on public transport? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Such a mission. <laughs> Does Luckily, Nikki have big muscles? Is that Nikki what has, goes off? Yeah, she's got big delts, so... <laughs> She's sweet. But no, um, luckily I don't, tr I don't travel very heavy. I just bring one guitar, a lot of strings because they tend to break, especially when you're going from different climates and temperatures. Um, 
and then I carry a pedal board with my loop station and whatnot in it and and that's about it a few pairs of knickers and you're ready to go seriously a jumper <laughs> this yeah. one yeah. <laughs> that's about it <laughs> <laughs> i like it okay and then last but not least sandy we can see you have your guitar can you please play something for us live say yes say yes say yes i definitely can Woo-hoo! Yes. bring out the microphones <laughs> what are you gonna play i'd actually like to play an older one if that's okay oh yes please it's called i just know and it is about, it's actually when I was going through a phase in my life when I was quite doubtful about all of this, where I'd been trying for quite a long time to get some sort of traction and it wasn't exactly happening. So I wrote it from the perspective of someone telling you that you can make it and they just know you will, even if they don't have a specific reason for it, um, they just know you'll get there. So, yeah. Teach my lungs to breathe underwater Teach my heart to be without hurt I taught her, I taught her Guide my feet towards the altar Close my hands and wait for an answer I caught her, I caught her Keep my secrets close, our hearts align I see darkness where you see light Emotions fall, our blood runs dry I see a future We're fading out again This world isn't big enough to live it on your own See fire in your eyes and I feel fire in my soul You're gonna make it through this, I just know Keep it in your heart, it's buried deep within your bones Don't you come on, or I will never let you It's close, our hearts aligned I see darkness where you see light Emotions fall, our blood runs dry I see a future inside your eyes We're fading out again We're fading out again, oh She said, this world isn't big enough to leave it on your own See fire in your eyes and I feel fire in my soul You're gonna make it through this, I just know Keep it in your heart, it's buried deep within your bones Don't you come on or I will never let you Just no
applause for Jacob Lee. Thank you for watching. Keep an eye on his North America tour and online. We'll see you next time. Bye.